Hello everyone. I am Trisha Dora Borwa from the Bhupan Hazirka School of Mass Communication, Krishna Kanta Hennig State Open University. And I'd like to welcome you all once again to another informative online class. In today's online discussion, we are going to talk about Unit 3 of the paper Traditional Folk Media, which belongs to third semester of BA program in Journalism and Mass Communication and the Krishna Kanta Hennig State Open University. Now, we have been talking about the importance of traditional folk media, you know, how folk media is helping us. Now, do you really think that uh, the growth of electronic media have had a massive impact on traditional media? And if so, to what extent electronic media might have had a massive impact? Definitely, the growth of electronic media, people have, uh, you know, uh, they completely, I won't say completely, people have kind of, you know, lessened the need to go through different print media forms. Because electronic media is at our fingertips. And these days, almost every one of us, we, we all have our Android mobiles. We just, early in the morning, if you want to look at any news stories, we just click a mobile phone. And then, you know, we just check and Google the different news stories. And one of the basic advantage of electronic media is that every second, the news is being updated unlike print media forms or maybe traditional media forms. So we are always on the go. We are so much busy with our own lives. So we just take the help of the mobile phone. Maybe we go to our workplace. We, 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 we check for our, uh, any other email or any uh, kind of important messages that might have come. And then maybe we go home. We just relax in front of the television. So that is how people, the, the work ethics have become. The way of you know, understand or the way of our work activity has become. Even then, we actually cannot lessen the impact or importance of traditional media. And with the electronic media boom, people, they actually fear the traditional media might fade away. But that might never happen as uh, it is an inseparable part of Indian culture. Definitely, electronic media, the importance has, has uh, risen. But this, doesn't, this does not mean that the importance of traditional media has come down. You know, and some traditional media like the Jatra or the Nautanki occasion includes the film style songs these days. Even television shows use puppetry or the folk dances. And uh, the different films uh, for a long period of time they have, they've used folk songs or folk theater forms to appeal to rural masses and generate the uniqueness. Uh, for example, I think um, most of you have seen the film Bhavni Bhavai. It's, it's a 1980 uh, art film uh, where the, the Bhavai folk form of Gujarat is used. Or the, the film Pipli Life. It's, it's another popular uh, film from the Hindi film industry. And in this particular film also they have used uh, the different folk songs to make satirical comments on common people's problems. Okay. And even... In Gangs of Vasipur, that's uh, it's a recent movie, uh, I think 2012, it was released. And it's uh, there in that particular movie also, there is a nice fusion of folk music, modern songs, uh, which, which actually could be seen. And in Paheli also, uh, the 2004 film uh, that was directed by Amol Palekar, uh, it was actually based on the, the culture of Rajasthan. And if you, if you clearly remember, uh, in this particular movie, a puppet was used to start and end the story very beautifully. So as a whole, we can say that, uh, yes, with the passage of time, uh, new technologies have come up. Uh, we have new forms of electronic media. We have new forms of online media to communicate. Yet uh, the value and the importance of traditional media has not come down. That's, and it's, it's mostly seen and the importance and the, the value or the uh, the uh, the identity of traditional media could be actually seen mostly is very much prominent most specifically in the rural areas okay and uh, there is also certain kind of interdependence between electronic media and traditional media and uh, of course one risk that remains is that we can't intermingle both these two forms it's, it's easier said than done because we need to keep the traditional folk media intact. We can't uh, try to, you know, incorporate some kind of modern elements to it and make it, you know, a rem bring out a remix version of it, which which actually will will not sustain in the long run. 
so there has to be some kind of difference we should keep both the two mediums separate but yes there can there can be interdependence electronic media can play important role you know in popularizing different traditional media forms that can be done okay and uh, folk media will always remain people's media definitely remains uh, people's media and uh, electronic media might never be able to challenge existence completely rather we can see in electronic media have actually depended on traditional media forms to disseminate important messages to the masses i think most of you must remember the uh, satellite instruction television experiment that was conducted in 1970s and the kera experiments in that those experiments they actually made use of uh, the different electronic media forms to popularize the folk media forms and of course uh, uh, cinema have always used traditional uh, folk media elements to tell the uh, to narrate the different stories to the people now lastly let us come to the different application of traditional media for development purposes now we have been talking about how different tradition folk medias are there in the country whether electronic media have had some kind of impact on traditional media or not and la and lastly we have tried to understand that uh, what implications can be there if there is impact of tradition of electronic media on traditional media now the uh, the fact of the matter is that have traditional media have re have they really been used for development purposes or it's just like you know people just make use of them and just say yes we have used this and there is no such resultant uh, kind of you know good uh, activity arising from that application well definitely traditional media has been used for development purposes a number of times but the focus is not there because uh, the people they don't try to focus more on the traditional folk forms. They try to focus only on you know uh, electronic media forms, different online media forms, social media, and so and so forth. Now the different public and private organizations they have made use of traditional folk forms for development purposes. Uh, for instance, we have the the song and drama division of the Ministry of Information Broadcasting under the Government of India. Okay, and uh, this this public body is the largest public body. Just it gets involved in such kind of uh, activities. They try to make use of different traditional folk forms, and they you know carry out different you know uh, they, they try to sensitize the people actually by use of different folk forms in different places across the country. And this particular division it tries to sponsor a large number of departmental troops and private troops for organizing the programs. Uh, which includes folk plays, poetry, recitation, um, puppet shows, their religious discourses, and their folk songs and folk dances. And uh, even the song and drama division, they make use of the puppets in its campaigns to promote the various government of projects and Life Insurance Corporation of India use puppets to educate the rural masses about the life insurance. Uh, of course, apart from that, you know, this particular division also carries out different folk performances. I mean, they try to organize different folk performances like plays, uh, street theaters, puppetry, ballads, you know, uh, in, in different parts of the country. And they used to focus on certain, on certain socially relevant issues. Like uh, they used to focus on, you know, family planning issue, maybe on savings, on alcoholism, on domestic violence and there is on patriotism on environmental causes or simply you know to eradicate those different superstitious beliefs from the minds of the people and of course we have some uh, other private organizations uh, which actually also makes use of uh, extensive use of different folk media forms uh, like we have the social action groups okay and uh, the social action groups they use uh, traditional folk media for development activities as well and when we talk about development in india the development is mostly concerned with developing the rural setup because the government's focus initiative is on you know incredible india on you know using more indigenous kind of uh, products to you know generate income or maybe using more indigenous product to you know generate uh, the livelihood of the people at the, uh, the, the rural level more specifically. So as far as India is concerned, our focus is on that, the development aspect is concerned. 
and uh, what better way to you know uh, disseminate such kind of messages other than the traditional folk media forms because traditional folk media forms are mostly uh, very much you know prominent at the rural areas you know of course in urban areas also we could see in some pockets mm -hmm. we could see their importance instead but more specifically in the rural areas uh, so it's the th they actually need you know the importance of traditional media was actually felt uh, uh, in the post independence period as well even during the making of the five year plans but the most important turning point came uh, in 1972 that was when the unesco and international planned parenthood federation they organized a series of meetings in london and there the, and thereafter they laid a lot of importance on integrated use of traditional and mass media for spreading the awareness on family planning so the the magbite commission uh, which was actually set up by unesco for study of you know communication problems internationally in 1977 uh, in this report titled one world many voices it also have record this particular report they even they recommended that uh, one should actually make use of traditional media even in the present context and uh, of course there are other important examples of development practices to traditional media for instance street theater street theater is very popular uh, to educate and as well as inform and uh, let me talk about the origin of street theater. Uh, this origin can be traced to the radical political theater. Okay. And it emerged not only not from the folk or traditional theater form, but rather from the tradition of Indian adaptations of Western proscenium theater, which were very much popular at that particular point of time in the urban centers. And uh, the main groups which were actually involved in, in this type of popular theater, they were. Uh, the social action groups, which is uh, which are known as the SAGs, uh, the health and agricultural extension workers, uh, student activists, uh, the political parties, uh, the religious reformers, and other women's organization. And uh, even you know the IPTA group, that's the Indian People's Theatre Association. They've also contributed towards disseminating information regarding the development purposes for development issues by performing different kinds of plays all across the country and even during the bengal famine the bengal indian people's theater association they actually played a very prominent role because they during this bengal famine which took place in 1943 it was it, it had a huge impact as far as the you know the country was concerned more specifically in the state of west bengal and at that point of time you know the situation was horrendous so they wanted to focus the situation at that point of time of Bengal and as a result what did they do? This particular IPTA troop, they travel all across the country. They used to perform different plays and they had to expose the hoarders uh, as well as other black marketers and they launched a campaign to save food. Even uh, not so long ago the Heart Care Foundation of India in New Delhi, uh, they took the initiative to use folk media to run campaigns across rural India to educate people on healthy nutritious eating habits of course we have our own electronic media to look into we have radio we have television even all India radio they have uh, very for very long period of time they have used folk folk art form of folk music or other oral forms to help the farmer and village community develop it uh, you know by way of focusing on different farming methods by way of focusing on different rural uh, rural related problems on, on solution to you know on how those problems can be mitigated so different issues have been you know tried to look after by the all india radio and of course indian television have also used uh, the different folk forms very effectively for the development purposes and uh, as I just said a few minutes back about the site program, the satellite instruction television experiment as well as the Kera communication project. Now both both these two projects actually it, it showed that you know uh, that how tradi uh, electronic media and as well as traditional media uh, have have actually helped the people uh, where these two experiments were conducted. They have actually uh, enabled the people uh, to and to educate them as well as inform the rural masses for the development. So, so far uh, with this, we have come to the end of
today's partic this particular unit 3 and in this unit we have tried to understand the historical overview of traditional media in India. We have also tried to understand the different traditional media forms in India and uh, the impact electronic media had on traditional media and finally the different applications of traditional media for development purposes. So with this I come to the end of our today's discussion. Thank you all so much.